Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Being that this is my first video of 2018, I'd just like to wish you all a very happy new year. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support in 2017. I am truly grateful for all of you. In today's video, we're going to talk about Manny MUA's January 2nd Snapchat slash Twitter rant. I didn't manage to grab his Snapchat rant before he deleted it, but I got the entire Twitter rant wherein I believe he said essentially the same thing. The Twitter rant is now deleted as well, which he did indicate was likely to occur. So let's go through the tweets and I'll share my thoughts along the way because while I get the point he was trying to make, he made a comment which may have unintentionally implicated other influencers who haven't been totally honest with their exclusives. I've said this before, but oftentimes when influencers go on these rants, the real tea lies within the rant and totally unrelated to the point they're trying to make. So without further ado, let's get into it. Manny began his rant by saying, how about we start 2018 off with a good old rant? This goes out to all the brands who love to try it. Let's begin. I'ma need brands in brackets, there isn't a ton out there, but they're out there, to stop sending me emails that say, hey, we would love to send you this product for free if you do a full dedicated video on it and speak highly of the product. Emoji, oh, and my favorite, we will send this to you exclusively and first if you do a video on it. How about you pay influencers? So you're telling me you wanna send me a product that costs pennies to make in exchange for a full video? Oh, okay, let's stop here for a minute and discuss. First off, I understand that no one works for free in influencers included, I get that, don't come for me. However, here's my issue. Let's say this company or companies in general sent Manny for instance, since it's his rant we're talking about, but this obviously applies to any influencer. Let's say the company sends the exact same email except they said, hey, we would love to send you this product if you do a full dedicated video on it and speak highly of the product and we're gonna pay you $3,000. Would we then have a rant about a brand wanting to pay for a positive video? Because that's problematic in my opinion, depending on how the influencer goes about it, which we'll discuss in a moment. I know this is totally unrelated to Manny's point, but this rant really made me wonder how many influencers are in fact paid for positive videos and how many of them are undisclosed. Let's talk about that for a minute. I mentioned earlier that I believe brands wanting to pay for positive videos on their products can be problematic. The reason I say this is because a lot of influencers do receive paid offers in exchange for positive videos and they don't disclose the fact that they were paid to speak highly of the product, which is misleading to their audience. The reason they don't disclose this is because most brands want the influencer to be received by their audience as being authentic, which in turn translates into sales for the brand and the influencer's audience being manipulated in the process. At the end of the day, when a brand pays an influencer for a video, the influencer works for the brand. Now, of course, you could argue that if an influencer were to receive this email and accept payment, they could call it a sponsored video and everyone is happy, but even if they label the video as sponsored, one of the terms of the sponsorship is that you have to speak highly of the product, so these influencers who say, this video is sponsored but all opinions are my own, unless they're fortunate enough to be picky with their sponsorships and only take on products that they do truly love and believe in, chances are they're not being totally truthful because their opinion was already established for them when they signed the contract. To be fair, in this particular situation, Manny would be an influencer who could be very picky about which sponsorships he takes. Using Manny as an example, to my knowledge he's been honest with this sponsored content in the past, but of course, there's there's no way to know for certain because as we know, these days, sponsored content is so easily hidden and disguised in unboxing videos, unboxing and IG stories, monthly favorites, hauls, first impressions, 2017 best of beauty videos. By the way, advertising and sponsored content is usually heightened for the month of December as is AdSense revenue which is how YouTubers get paid. You may have noticed your favorite influencers pumping out more videos in December, vlogging more than usual, creators that don't typically vlog may participate in vlog in addition to the regular content, and the reason for that is because AdSense money is high in December. Every creator knows that, sure they may love vlogging or quote unquote challenging themselves to upload every day for the month of December, but the increase in content is likely because of the money. In fact, what a lot of them do is rather than snapchatting their days in December, they vlog, call it vlogmas, and upload in between their usual content to cash in on that December AdSense revenue. Come January, they're back to their regularly scheduled videos, they may even post less in January because January AdSense revenue is shit. 
By the way, while I'm rambling, I mentioned earlier how sponsored content is easily disguised in PR unboxing videos on IG stories. So in case you're unaware, some influencers will say, usually on Snapchat mind you, that they're going to unbox their massive amounts of PR on IG stories and to meet them over there. Now tell me why you're on Snapchat telling your followers to move to another platform to watch your unboxing. The excuse used to be that it's annoying to do unboxings on Snapchat because you have to constantly stop and add snaps to your story before before they implemented the continuous snapping feature. Therefore, being that you got more time on IG stories, influencers preferred to do these unboxings there despite the fact that their followers preferred Snapchat. Okay, fine. Well, now Snapchat implemented the continuous snapping feature, so problem solved. You're happy and your followers are happy now that everything can be done on Snapchat, right? No. The problem isn't solved because time restriction isn't the issue. The truth is that brands prefer Instagram because the amount of people you're able to reach is far greater than Snapchat. Aside from having way more capabilities than Snapchat, Instagram Stories also provides the ability to drive traffic to sites or brands through links, hashtags, geotags, and ultimately, basically speaking, Instagram Stories is brand friendly while Snapchat is more of a personal social media platform these days. I've seen influencers run polls on Twitter asking their audience whether they prefer Snapchat or Instagram Stories, and the result is always Snapchat. Yet they continue to use Instagram Stories despite their audience saying they prefer to watch them on Snapchat. Now, you have to ask yourself if these influencers were doing an unboxing for the fun of it just to show their audience new products, why wouldn't they do it on the platform their audience prefers? The answer is because they're likely working with a brand and the brand requested that the unboxing is done on Instagram Stories so they can maximize their dollar and reach the largest amount of people. Don't don't forget, on Instagram, posts can be shared over and over publicly, while on Snapchat, everything's kind of done in the dark. No one has an actual profile to view. Of course, there are influencers who obviously want to use Instagram stories for the greater reach and exposure, but a lot of the time, it's the easiest way to get around not disclosing a paid sponsorship, especially with the larger influencers who know what they're doing. Trust that they are not unboxing for shits and gigs when they know that they could be paid for same. Anyway, sorry for my own rant, but these are things that you should be aware of. Now, back to our regularly scheduled program. So, in his rant, Manny mentions that brands sometimes offer to send influencers products first and exclusively in exchange for a positive video, which is something I've known and talked about in the past. Manny also says that influencers should be paid for said videos, which is fine. He also goes on to say, I want beauty influencers to be taken more serious in 2018 by big corporate brands. This is our job. People have to realize we do this for a living. Is your eyeliner, lipstick, or blush going to pay my rent or my bills or help my family? I don't think so. So if you're a beauty influencer reading this, please stop giving handouts to brands because they're a brand. You are worth so much more than freebies. Advertising and exposure in other fields of work isn't free, so why do you do it for free? Okay, so obviously I understand the message behind his rant. However, I assume that influencers at his level know their worth and wouldn't be giving out freebies to brands offering to send them products first and exclusively in exchange for a favorable video, correct? Most large influencers would know better, correct? So would I be safe to assume that larger influencers who have made these favorable videos about products that they were sent exclusively and ahead of their peers were definitely paid to do so? I think that would be fair to assume going on what Manny is saying. So, when Jeffree Star reviewed the Glitter Glam Glow Mask two months before its release, was that a freebie because there was zero disclosure of an ad there? And when Jeffree Star reviewed the Wet n Wild Mermaid collection where he revealed in the video that it was an exclusive, was that also a freebie because again, no disclosure of an ad there? Jeffree is no dummy when it comes to business opportunities and by the way, it's not just Jeffree. I'm just saying it goes both ways, honey. There is so much deception that goes on in the land of influencers and social media and I know the same can be said on the influencer's side of things. I get that, and again, I get the point Manny was making, but I feel like this was only an issue because this time, it was the influencer getting the short end of the stick. If it were the other way around, would it simply be swept under the rug? Probably. This is why I make these videos. If you guys have watched my channel for a while now, you know that I'm very passionate about these things because we, as subscribers to these influencers, have also been taken advantage of, and while Manny is standing up for the influencers, I'm saying my people 
piece as a subscriber. In closing, I just want to remind you that this was not an attack on Manny whatsoever. The only thing I will say is that if he was passionate about what he said in his rant, he should have left it up rather than deleting it, but I get that keeping it up was probably more trouble than it was worth. I will leave the rest of his rant up if you want to pause the video and read through his tweets, but as always, I want to hear from you guys. I want to know how you felt about what Manny said, and I want to hear your thoughts on my opinion as well. One thing I do want to make clear is that I'm not saying all influencers are dishonest with their subscribers, but I am curious to know whether you believe it's possible to be an influencer and be totally 100% honest and transparent and still make it big. Let me know. Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Here for the T2, and I'll talk to you guys again soon in my next video. Bye!